to another video. Uh, this video, um, I'll be talking about on how to build your own how to build your own Yahoo Weather um, control. Uh, this control can be used, for example, in your website. Um, obviously, I, I have a Windows uh, program here as a demo but the code can be used on the ASPX uh, code behind so basically I'm gonna show you what it does first and then I can go over the code so I'm gonna type uh, random I guess zip code I think this is in California so I'm gonna get the weather from there that's the idea now once I click on the button here <clears throat> I get a really nice uh, weather um, info right away and it tells you that it's coming from Yahoo and it tells you that this is from LA California and conditions pretty basic information but really helpful and obviously this is provided by the weather channel now the um, important thing on this one is that you need to get <clears throat> in order for you to get this weather you need to get uh, WOEID uh, which is right here and I'll show you that code uh, how to get that number to get this one done and obviously you can customize this whole uh, weather output uh, the way it looks the icon of this little image and I'll show you right now uh, I'm gonna stop the program and before I continue uh, if you get all you need to do is go to this uh, link uh, weather.yahoo.com slash weather and from there on you have all the information you need uh, to get started before you even try this code, before you even uh, request the code, make sure you apply for an ID or an API ID from Yahoo. Uh, make sure you go to the links home link over here and then make sure you go and request an ID because if I send you this code, uh, I'll send it without my application ID. So you guys need to request your own if not the program will fail so if you go down here start going down the page you see uh, the requirements so what are you requesting so as you can see uh, this is the URL where you request and you need to pass two arguments well uh, one is optional but the W W O EID is required. Uh, the other um, requirement is the argument is you in case you want to specify how you want uh, the degrees. Um, so, but you can just leave it blank or don't pass it at all. So, here's an example <clears throat> uh, where the yahoo apis.com slash forecast. Uh, SS question mark W equals and that's the number you need to get now how do you get that number ahead of time because most users don't know what you know their city like Sun Valley California it is unless you're using this one of course but how do you do that so that's where I'm gonna show you how can you get this number and from there then you can of course send your uh, your request to get the forecast so I'm gonna go back to my code um, so here's my code well this is the little UI uh, it's pretty simple a text box and this guy is the I named this guy enter zip this is where you type your zip code and a button basic button and a label here this is where the WOEID comes out 
And the next thing I have is a web browser control. Down here, com common controls, web browser, nothing special, just a regular controls. And so the idea is that you type the zip code because most users know, you know, their zip code. So what I've done here, let me close this guys. So the first thing I've done is I'm checking that the zip code is at least is greater than four. So it has to be five digits. And on this call right here, I'm making sure that whatever the user types in, uh, it's a number. So if it's a number, which is a boolean, uh, we'll go ahead and run this code from here down all the way down here. If it's not, it's gonna um, <clears throat> let the user know that it must be a numeric, the zip code. Uh, and this guy is an error provider. Go back to the design. So you can see here is an error provider. And I got this one from I think it's the component error provider and the way you use it is you just pass that control that you want it to set in the message the the user gets <clears throat> now if they don't enter anything or at least if it's less than five digits uh, I'm sorry five uh, yeah the length is less than five <clears throat> it will throw an error saying enter your zip code you know something like that so we just keep it simple, but that's the idea. At least check it's a digit and it's uh, a zip code. <clears throat> now, before I go on the next set of code, I go over this uh, function here. It's num number, and it's right here. And the arg one argument text is a uh, a zip or a number, whatever text. And I'm using a rec. <coughs> regular expression and this guy is just checking for digits and if it's match it will let me know well yes or true it's a digit or false it's not very simple uh, let me go back to the namespaces I'm using on this demo I'm using the I don't think this one is required the XML that link but I'm sure this one is. <clears throat> I added it. XML, uh, text, regular expressions, I/O, and web UI. Now, <clears throat> everybody knows. Or if you don't know how to add those, or something is missing, you go to the reference, right-click, add reference, and you go to .NET tab. Now. I'm gonna say something about the last one system that web that UI when I first did this project uh, the system web that UI <clears throat> was not here on this list I went down here web at least that one it didn't show up on this list and this is the problem if it doesn't show up on your uh, reference on that net tab System that web if that is missing, you need to do this to fix it. Cancel that. Go to your project, right click, go properties, and make sure if you had um, the client profile, it will not show up. So if you're on using client profile, switch back to framework four. And once you save it, it will ask you that you will have to close the profile, I mean the project, and reopen. Just say yes. And go back to your code. And from after you switch, then you go to the reference, add reference, and go back to the system.web to add it to your, uh, to your project namespaces. Because you're going to need the UI um, namespace for this project. So that's it for that. <clears throat> Close this guy. So that's what happens um, when the user enters the zip code. <clears throat> now, before I go to the next line, line 50, 
um, as you can see when the form loads I'm setting my web browser to navigate to a blank page as you can see nothing complicated just send it to the blank page because we have we don't have the data yet so or you can set it to anything else but in my case I'll leave it blank so <clears throat> the next step is for the next line of code on 40 line 48 I'm just clearing the the error in line 50 now here's where we grab in the tech or the zip code so this zip code is going into this method get w o e i d uh, so we're going to go there now with the zip code in hand <coughs> So I'm gonna go find that right here. So as you can see, the argument, the zip code, of course. We take it in. Uh, we'll build a string right here, a variable. Just call it query or request, something like that. And in here, I'm just formatting uh, my string, uh, passing two arguments. <coughs> Uh, this is the URL that you need to use and you're gonna pass two things place and then followed by your application ID so before you continue make sure you have your an actual Yahoo application ID so the way you do is you <coughs> format this so I'm passing my zip code so this value coming from here from the UI this guy this value from here is gonna go in here instead of the zero it, it's gonna be replaced by the zip code so that's zip code is gonna be inserted in here by the zero so this is just a, a placeholder call it that way and then the second thing I'm gonna pass is my API ID which is going to be placed right here on the URL so the next thing you do is um, get an XML document ready because uh, Yahoo will send you back XML data so we build an XML document and we are going to load <coughs> we're going to be using the load method um, to load XML document from a specific URL so the URL is this guy so once you load it <coughs> the next thing is to do is uh, um, we're gonna grab it's gonna return a bunch of stuff but for this demo we just need the WO EID so the simplest way to do it is to get an XML node list and then even though we're not getting a bunch of this but uh, this is the easiest way to get it we're gonna grab an um, elements tag as you can see the elements tag uh, is really easy to use and all you have to do is pass which tag you want from the XML and as you can see it returns an XML not list so that's what I'm using here in XML not list because that's what is this guy returning so since I know that it's going to be returning one, only one WOEID, then I can go ahead and say, well, then in this case, variable call is KK, uh, and then you can pass uh, an index and based on zero. So why did I type zero? Because it's only one. This guy is going to return. It's supposed to re return a list. Of WOEID but in the XML since you're just sending one zip code it's only gonna send you one uh, WOEID so I'm just passing zero because that's the only one I will have on this list and I grab the inner text and the inner text is gonna be that number this number so once I have that as you can see I'm returning it so that's why in my button event right here as you can see 
you pass the zip code and it returns a WOE ID and then I'm passing it to my label and that label is just this one right here now once I have that <clears throat> um, this I'm just gonna make sure that my web browser is is on this blank page and then I'm gonna refresh it because every time I click zip code or enter the zip code I want this guy in my web browser to go back to the blank refresh and when I go to the next step it will give me the new data on the web browser so now I'm gonna go to this uh, method get weather and this one doesn't take any arguments because um, I'll show you go down here now as you can see I'm building another uh, URL and this URL is different uh, the uh, site is different and you can get it from here it's, it's basically this guy forecast it's the same thing but in this case uh, as you can see on the doc help it, you have to pass the W O E I D so you pass W equals in the number so that's what I'm doing here string that format and then I'm passing one which is and I'm grabbing this guy from the label since I grabbed it earlier from here well it looks like my battery is dying but power core so once you pass that argument the same thing you do the same process uh, Yahoo will return an XML document and the same thing I'm doing XML document and my variables call w data or weather data or whatever else you want to call it and you pass the same method you load the URL uh, once you get the data the next thing to do is um, uh, let me show you the the results of the XML file so as you can see this is a sample um, I got I was using a zip code somewhere in Georgia pick a random city and back to the code as you can see here um, I'll be picking a few things out of that file but this is how it looks uh, the first thing it sends you well everything is in this channel and it has a few tags you might want to use on your own uh, custom weather channel or whatever you want to call it control it gives you the title uh, this is good to have because you can tell the user uh, where the weather is for the link description language uh, last build and the city temperature chill sunrise sunset and this is just a Yahoo image like a logo and same thing here uh, you also get the latitude and longitude which is good to have uh, for maps uh, the condition but on this uh, tutorial that I did I'm not using I grabbed some of these uh, values but I am just kept it simple so I'm just using the description and the description is kind of summary of the whole thing so if you don't want to bother of getting these values you can just use the description value and this is what you pass to the web browser this section from here all the way down right here and then you're done with your control on uh, the bottom here is kind of the same thing inside here tells you that for Thursday and Friday the temperature so I'm using this description for this demo but I'll show you how to get the other um, like the title and link and all that description on this on this tutorial so as I go back here the first thing I done is get the channel uh, not from the XML and then what I'm doing here is I'm saying well from my document first I want to go into the RSS which is this one 
so I'm at this level right now RSS so I grab this whole thing which is the whole document after that I say well I want to go down one level I want to grab the channel so now instead of being here I'm down here at this level at the channel so from here I can start walking down another step and another step all the way down and grabbing the values so as you can see this is the channel so from the, from the channel uh, from this parent call it that way I'm grabbing the title and it's really easy so you do this channel that select single knot and you pass which one you want to grab title and then you say well uh, I want the inner text and what's the inner tag what the what does that mean so what I'm saying is I'm grab this tag this whole thing from here all the way down here grab this tag and then inner chan inner text means this see so you say select tag blah 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 and give me the inner text which is this the same thing goes for the rest of these uh, variables see and then you can print it out right here just print it on that to the console and here I'm doing the same thing link you want the link then you do the same thing channel select what tag or select single node <clears throat> and you say I want the link node and pass the inner because that's what you care and then here you continue description let's build and so on now the tricky part if you want to get this portion if you get to this part and then you want to get the city uh, this is a little bit tricky because as you can see this tag is w weather column location and there's no inner text here like these other ones uh, these are called attributes so you got city attribute and then a value another attribute and then uh, the city, the state, and the country, and then it has a value. So the way to do that is, uh, since this tag has like a prefix, this W weather I believe it's called prefix, and as you can see at the top of the document, it has right here uh, XML namespace, and it has a prefix. So for you to get this value here's how you do it uh, as you can see I have an XML namespace manager uh, don't ask me why but this is how you have to work on that to get the values so what this guy requires is an XML document and it's it needs an XML document that name table so and where did I get that well that's the same Got it from here. This guy. And this guy has a property name, name table. So that's what you're passing. The next thing you do is you you need to add a namespace. And to do that you pass the prefix. And whoa, I got this prefix from here. Right here. Here's the prefix Y weather. And then you pass uh, the URL for this namespace and uh, I got it from here from the same document too from here all the way down here I got the URL for the prefix or the namespace so once you have this done then you start doing this kind of the same thing you want the city then you do again channel select single knob and then you pass the prefix location and the namespace manager if you don't if you're missing this from your code it's gonna fail so it takes two arguments the tag name the namespace manager and then you say well what attribute do you want back and I want here the city so in this case this city and then Douglasville so go back here as you can see it says dot value because I want the value of this attribute 
it's way different than saying I want the inner text because there's no inner text attributes have values so the same rule applies for the um, for the region country and temperature same thing you do but the only difference changes what attribute you want back so if you keep going down I did this for as an example but I'm not using the these values in the code in the web browser control what I'm doing is really simple you know how it has the description and inside the description there's a C data uh, information here so what I'm doing is just reading this whole thing and passing it to the browser so what I've done is I'm using an assistant I/O string writer and then I'm using an X HTML text writer um, and this text writer is going to be <clears throat> writing into this string uh, writer that's the requirement now the next thing to do is just build your this is like building your HTML page like manually for your web browser so what I've done here the first thing is you pass the HTML tag the head the body and inside the body I'm passing the title and this title is gonna be this guy title so I'm passing the title and then I'm passing a BR which is a, a new line <coughs> um, and then the next thing I'm passing it the CD data that CD data is right here same process item because I need to go to this not first this parent and from here then I can go to description so as you can see I go to this item then I grab the next tag that I want which is description and on this case I'm getting the inner text because it does have inner text so I'm just dumping this into this variable so that's what I'm doing here writing the C data onto it and then the last thing to do is on the document is to close the tags and then you close your writer HTML writer then uh, you initialize an HTML document and we're gonna assign it to we're gonna grab the web browser document into this guy now the next thing to do is we write in this document what do we write we write whatever we have on this variable on the string writer once you do this portion then your web browser will show that uh, the weather or uh, in other words it will show you this whole portion of it and that's how it works pretty simple uh, we'll try this one. I don't know where it did this, but we'll just try it. As you can see, we got a little burn, Georgia. I don't know what else. Uh, I don't know if this is real sick or not. I guess it is. So as you can see, it's working fine. As in the background, as you can see, the the console is working too because I'm grabbing the values from here and this program is working perfectly as I expected to uh, obviously if you grab the values you can build your own uh, instead of using what Yahoo returns in the C data description instead of using this guy you can of course use uh, um, <coughs> the variables you can uh, design your own weather control differently since you have the values here you can just grab it and make a class and uh, customize it really nice with colors and whatever you want so hopefully this was a, a good tutorial on how to build uh, a weather control using uh, Yahoo APIs uh, so as you saw it was really easy to build uh, as you can see here it tells you what is returning the title link and all that so thank you for watching if you have any questions 
Uh, you can send me an email at uh, vpacheco99 at gmail.com or just leave me a comment on YouTube. Thank you for watching.